the world is presently looking for a sustainable energy source and hydrogen has been identified as one of the clean energy sources for the next century. Depending on the method of production of hydrogen, there are different grades of hydrogen like gray hydrogen, blue hydrogen, green hydrogen. So hydrogens are getting produced in refinery and petrochemicals for many years now. And this particular hydrogen which are generated through steam cracking or other methods are popularly known as the gray hydrogen. Now this gray hydrogen can be converted into the blue hydrogen when the carbon dioxide that is generated in this process are captured and stored. And there are lots of demand around this blue hydrogen at this moment. So how this gray hydrogen is basically generated and recovered in the process plant. In this particular lecture, we'll be discussing how hydrogen recovery is done through pressure swing adsorption process. The use of pressure swing adsorption process has undergone a tremendous growth during the last decades, mainly due to its simplicity and cost effective operation. Its principal uses include the extraction of highly pure hydrogen, methane and carbon dioxide along with production of nitrogen and oxygen. Additionally, it has gained increasing significance for effectively removing carbon dioxide from direct reduction top gases on large scale. So this is the basic process flow diagram where the feed gas goes into the PSA process. The feed gas contains the hydrogen and other impurities at the high pressure. And from the PSA process, hydrogen is recovered with, with, with high purity, which is more than 99.99% purity and it is in the high pressure, right? And then there will be a tail gas, which is in the low pressure, right? where we will get mostly impurities and small amount of hydrogen. So what are the various sources of the feed gas or hydrogen in the plant? They can be synthesis gas from steam reforming process. They can be the partial oxidation or gasification, or there can be various off gases like ethylene off gases, coke oven gas, methanol, and ammonia barge gas. Now let's discuss about the basic operating principle of this process, right? And this separation of hydrogen is basically done through a technique called as adsorption. So pressure swing adsorption technology operates by physically binding the gas molecule to an adsorbent material. The strength of interaction between the gas molecules and adsorbent depends on the factor such as the gas component, the type of adsorbent material, the partial pressure of the gas component, and the operating temperature. The separation effect arises from variations in the binding forces to the adsorbent material. Highly volatile components with low polarity, such as hydrogen, exhibit minimal adsorption in contrast to the molecules such as nitrogen, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, hydrocarbon, and water vapor. As a result, these impurities can be selectively absorbed from the hydrogen containing stream, leading to the recovery of high purity hydrogen. So the feed gas which contains the impurities and hydrogen when it goes through the adsorbent bed, the impurities other, all the impurities get absorbed into the bed and hydrogen is get released from the 
top of the adsorbent basal. So this is the basic uh, operating principle or basic process behind this technique. Now, another thing about the adsorbent process is adsorbents absorb more at high pressure compared to low pressure. So PSA process uses this technique. So PSA process basically works at constant temperature and uses the effect of alternating pressure and the partial pressure to perform the adsorption and desorption, right? Because you have a bed, right? Once, once the materials or impurities get absorbed into the bed, you need to regenerate the bed so that the, it can absorb the next batch of the feed gas and impurities. Since heating or cooling is not required, short cycles within a range of minutes are achieved. The PSA process consequently allows the economical removal of large amount of impurities. So as you can see in this curve, which is a pressure versus time. So the high pressure feed gas. So when the feed gas goes into the absorbent bed, it is at the high pressure and at the low pressure, the tail gas gets removed from the bed, right? And from the top, you get the high pressure, uh, high purity hydrogen. As we discuss along the process, this concept will get more clearer to you. Now the PSA sequence. Now pressure swing adsorption plant comprises essential components using including an adsorbent vessel, adsorbent material, tail gas drums, valve skid, connected by piping, control valve instrumentation and control system for unit operation. Obviously, you need a vessel, adsorber vessel, and the vessel should be filled with the adsorbent material and the tail gas that is coming out of the absorbent vessel should go into the tail gas drum for the further treating and there will be valve skid so that it can, uh, so that we can operate it in a sequence, right? And there is a requirement for instrumentation to uh, have the proper sequencing operation right so basically if you see the pressure swing adsorption process it contains of four fundamental steps one is adsorption second is depressurization third is regeneration and fourth is repressurization so we'll go in details of this four step to identify how these different processes work together to generate uh, pure hydrogen. Now the step one. Now the step one, what happens in the step one? Basically impurity absorption occurs under high pressure dictated by the feed gas pressure. The feed gas ascend through the adsorbent vessel with impurities like water, heavy hydrocarbon, light hydrocarbon, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and nitrogen selectively adhering to the adsorbent material surface. The adsorber vessel releases the high pure hydrogen from the top. Once the predetermined period elapses, the adsorption phase in this vessel concludes, initiating the regeneration process. Another adsorber assumes the adsorption role to maintain an uninterrupted supply of hydrogen. So as you have understood by now that the adsorbent vessel need to be regenerated to process the next batch of impurities with hydrogen. So only one adsorbent vessel is not sufficient. You need a series of adsorbent vessel to, uh, to conclude the task. And as a minimum, uh, there is a requirement of four adsorbent vessel. There are now different PSA processes where 8, 10 and 16 adsorbent vessels are also getting used.
step two is the depressurization process so the first step adsorption occurs at the high pressure now the pressure need to be released so that the tail gas can be removed from the bottom of the absorbent vessel and this particular step contains multiple sub steps which are known as equalization provide purge and dump so let discuss this particular chart explains you the pressure swing process for a four bed absorber so this gives you this chart gives you a pressure versus time sequence so in the y axis there is pressure and in the x axis there is time right and this gives you how the pressure swing occurs in one absorber versus another of the absorber for a particular absorber suppose a at a particular time the adsorption process starts after this adsorption the depressurization process starts and the depressurization contains of three sub steps which are known as equalization provide purge and dump right and after this depressurization the regeneration process starts which is also known as purging after regeneration then again pressurization starts pressurization has two steps which is repressurization one and repressurization two right now see uh, the situation like when the equalization occurs the same on one of the absorber the pressure goes down and the same pressure is getting equalized to another dump here so the pressure from absorber a is getting released and it is getting added to absorber c similarly when providing purge this purge process is getting linked to another adsorption purging process or regeneration process right so this is how the whole cycle works and for an effective PSA you need at least four adsorber and th that is a basic or initial design okay let's now discuss this different steps into much more detail so first step is within the depressurization section is equalization right now the depressurization initiates in the co-current direction progressing from the bottom to the top the hydrogen retained in the void space of the adsorption material is then utilized to pressurize another adsorber that has recently completed its regeneration process the number of this pressure equalization steps typically ranging from 1 to 4 is contingent upon the total number of adsorber and the prevailing process condition conducting additional pressure equalization steps serves to reduce the hydrogen losses and enhance the overall hydrogen recovery rate so as you can see this particular case where the equalization process from the adsorber a the pressure is getting released and the same pressure is utilized in adsorber c which has just completed its regeneration step the next step is provide purge this is the final depressurization step in concurrent direction providing pure hydrogen to purge or regenerate another adsorber in this case you can see the adsorber a is releasing the releasing the mixture and this same mixture is getting used or same purge is getting used in adsorber d for regeneration the next step is dump at a certain point of time the remaining pressure must be released in counter current direction to prevent the breakthrough of impurities at the top of adsorber this is the first step of the regeneration phase when the dissolved impurities 
leave the adsorber at the bottom and flow to the tail gas system of the PSA plant. Right, so here, as you can see, here is the dump, and this dump goes to the tail gas because we are we are depressurizing, depressurizing. So after a certain time, if we go on depressurizing, the impurities will break through, and it will go into the pure hydrogen stream that we don't want. So impurities have to be dumped at certain point of time. So this is the dump state. After dump state. The next step comes is regeneration or it is also known as the purging and it is carried out during the ultimate desorption phase which occurs at the lowest pressure within the PSA sequence. The exceptionally pure hydrogen derived from an adsorber during the purging step is employed to purge the desorbed impurities into the tail gas system. This process minimizes the residual loading on the adsorbent material, ensuring that PSA cycle operates with maximum efficiency. So after regeneration, the next two steps are pressurization. And there are two steps basically R1 and R2 in the repressurization cycle. These are the crucial phase preceding the recommencement of the adsorption. Following the regeneration process, the adsorber needs to undergo the pressurization once more. This is achieved through the pressure equalization step, utilizing the proper hydrogen source from the adsorbers currently undergoing the depressurization. As pressure equalization alone is insufficient to attain the final adsorption pressure, a split stream from the hydrogen product line is employed for the repressurization to the required desorption pressure. Once the regenerated adsorber reaches the specified pressure, it seamlessly resumes the adsorption role, taking over the vessel that has just completed the adsorption cycle. So, so this is the repressurization. So you can see that adsorption, depressurization, regeneration, and again repressurization. This is how this whole, whole cycle works and one adsorber bed after one another adsorption bed. And this is how the continuous flow of hydrogen is maintained. Hope you have understood the PSA process, though this process is little bit complicated, but I tried to explain it in the most simplistic way. Uh, in the next upcoming lectures, we will be talking about the different issues that PSA units normally faces during operation and maintenance phase. Thank you.